Welcome. I'm going to be replacing the battery in my mid-2012 MacBook Pro. This is actually the second time I've replaced it. I replaced it about five years ago. I think one of the problems I have is that I leave it plugged in all the time and I don't cycle the battery enough. So then the battery bulges up and it presses against the trackpad and the trackpad quits working. So this is the battery I'm going to be using in it. And if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So this battery does come with some screwdrivers for opening this up, but I'll be using this V-Man Precision Screwdriver Set. V-Man did send this to me for a previous video, but they're not associated with this video. So I'll pull the screwdriver out and I need the triple aught bit. So I'll pull that out. That should be this one here. So this says PH000. So here I have the laptop on its back. So I've already backed up the data on this. It's important to always have backups, but especially before you're about to open up a computer. Now, a lot of times I'll let the battery discharge before I remove a battery. I haven't on this one. The likelihood of me puncturing this is very low, but it's not a bad idea to drain the charge on your battery before you take it out. So I'm going to remove all 10 screws around the perimeter here. So it's hard to see on camera, but you want to make sure your screwdriver is perpendicular to the screw and you want to press down firmly while you unscrew it, especially if they've never been unscrewed before. So I'll unscrew those and then I'll set them next to the laptop so I know where they go. So now I'll remove the other nine. There was a little pressure on this corner because the battery is pressing up on it. Okay, so I have all the screws out. So this would be your last opportunity to flip it over and shut it down if you forgot to do that. So now I'm going to pry the bottom off. I'll just stick my fingers back here and it pops right off. I'll set that off to the side. So here we have the battery. I want to disconnect the battery. I'll grab the spudger tool that came with the battery. I'll get right in here to the battery disconnect and I'll pry up on it. Now you want to be careful because you could break it. And that's one of the reasons we made a backup because if you break your computer, you want to be able to recover your data. Okay, we have that loose now. Next, we want to remove this screw here. It's a tri-lobe. So I'll be using this Y3 bit. There's another one of those screws right here. So I'll take it out. Now, if you have a magnetic tip and it lifts the screw out, you'd probably want to bring the screw over the battery this way as opposed to this way so you don't drop it in a nook or cranny. Mine stayed in there, so I'll pull that out. And now we can pull the battery out. So it fits under this area here, so you want to hinge it from the back. So you want to lift a portion towards the middle of the laptop and then slide that out. And here we have the battery, and you can see it's kind of puffed up there. We'll get the new battery out. So this is thinner here. And this is an aftermarket battery, but my original Apple battery did the exact same thing. So with my new battery, I'm hopefully going to power cycle this on occasion to help prevent this from happening. So this old battery I had says it was 63.5 watt hours. This new one says it is 65.7 watt hours. So I don't know how accurate that is. So I'll put the new battery in the same way the old one came out. I'll slide it under here. I'll press it down. Okay. I'll make sure these screw holes are lined up. I need to move it over just a tiny bit bit. Looks like that's about right. I'll put the tri-lobe screws back in. So one thing I'll do with these tiny screws is I'll turn it backwards until I hear it click. And backwards is counterclockwise. And that means the thread skipped. And then I'll go forwards. So if your screwdriver is not magnetic, a lot of times I'll hold it like this and I'll take my pinky here and I'll hold it on the intersection of the screw and the bit like so. And then I will stick it in the hole, tighten it down. Okay, for some reason that screw's not going in, so what I'm going to do is loosen this screw up. Because something might be bound a little bit, in case I need to move this battery back and forth. Okay, there we go, the new battery's in. Now I can attach the battery connector. So I'm going to kind of pull it back a little bit to get it at the right angle, because I want it to go mostly straight down on. I'm covering this up with my hands. Let me see if I can try not to do that. There we go, it's on like so. So now we're powered up. So this would probably be a good time to clean out the fan with some canned air. I don't have any with me right now. And actually a better time would have been when the battery was not in here. So you want to stop the fan while you're cleaning it out so it doesn't spin real fast. So I'll put the back back on. 
like so. Now, if you're very careful, you can turn this over and open it up and make sure it powers on. And I usually like to do that. So if it's not on, make sure you check your connections or something, but I'm just going to reassemble it from here on out. So I'll put the Phillips bit back in. I'm going to put all of these screws back in and I won't do a final tightening until they're all threaded in. That should help prevent anything from binding. Okay, that's all finished. I'll flip it over, open up, make sure it powers on. So the battery did come with a bag of screws, so you have some extra screws if you lose any. And then an important part is calibrating your battery. So you can pause the screen and read through this if you'd like. But the basic steps are you go into your settings and turn off the energy savings so the computer doesn't fall asleep. You want to disconnect the power from it and then let it run until it turns itself off. Then connect the power adapter and let it charge to 100%. And it says the battery must be charged to full and discharged for three to four times to optimize the performance. The charging process takes more than five hours. And then when you're done, go back into that energy saving control panel and turn it back to the sleep mode or whatever you had it on. So I'll show that really quick here. So if you go into the light bulb energy saver here, it says computer sleep, never. So I had that on that anyway. Normally you would have this on something lower like 15 minutes. For what I use this computer for, I run tasks sometimes where I don't want this to sleep. So now I'm telling it to never sleep and I can let this run down all the way, then I'll charge it up. And here I'll use this coconut battery utility and it gives us some stats on our battery. It says full charge is 6160 milliamp hours. Design capacity is 6000. It's charged to 27.8%. It's had two cycle counts on it. And we can also see in the top menu, which is off the screen, that this is charged to 28% right now. So I'm going to let this discharge, I'll run it through those cycles, and then I'll be good to go. So that's how you replace the battery in a mid-2012 MacBook Pro. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.